Those of you that have been with me for a while know I love Road Rash. My journey with the series began on the Sega Genesis in 1991 and hit its peak with the 32-bit 3DO version in 1994. I was always drawn to the rough and tumble combat that really didn't have an equal at the time on home consoles. Even when I found a Road Rash game less than stellar, I could still play it because the appeal was just so incredibly high. When Electronic Arts announced that a Sega CD version was coming in 1995, I was thrilled at the possibilities. One of my favorite games for that hardware had been Batman Returns, so I had visions of a custom engine for the Sega CD with loads of hardware-assisted sprite scaling. I mean, Batman Returns had been relatively early in the console's life, and I had hoped this new Road Rash would look even better. After all, Electronic Arts had been no stranger to the Sega CD, and had actually already released five games for it, including the likes of Wing Commander and FIFA. I mean, when the Sega CD got something right, it was an experience you couldn't play on any other 16-bit platform. I just knew that Electronic Arts wouldn't let me down, and this game was going to be something special. The question is, did it live up to the expectations I had set for it, or did it crash and burn like so many Sega CD ports before it? I hope you guys enjoy Road Rash for the Sega CD. If you have played any of the previous 16-bit Road Rash titles, you'll be right at home here. The gameplay for the most part is identical. The aim is to survive each race in place number one. There are five levels in total, each representing longer and tougher tracks. There are five tracks per level to compete on. Each one has its own dangers to contend with and obstacles to slow you down. Whether it be cars, pedestrians, cops, or the occasional tree, every piece of scenery is out to wreck you. Along with trying to avoid these obstacles, you'll also need to worry about other bikers. This mix of degenerates are armed to the teeth and ready to send you to the hospital every chance they get. Luckily, you can punch and kick them back, and there are even weapons you can steal to aid your calls. Two modes of play decide your options. The Thrash mode is a quick start that is essentially the arcade option. Here you jump straight into the game with no worry about anything else but the racing. You just qualify for each track and move up a level. The Big Game mode is actually where the heart of the features lie. Here you can choose one of eight different racers, each with their own unique attitude, look, money, and weapons. The journey you face here is not only that you qualify for each race, but you must also collect money and buy new bikes. Each of these bikes handle differently and have their own acceleration and top speed differences. You also get to speak with your fellow racers, each one showcasing their friendly and not so friendly attitudes. If you survive all five levels and qualify for all five tracks in the process, you'll get an ending. It won't be easy though because like the previous games in the series, this one is tough. Level 5 presents tracks that are up to four times longer than level 1, and once you start hitting speeds above 150, every twist and turn becomes potentially a wreck waiting to happen. You'll get more cops, more cars, and a challenge that will grind many gamers to bits. Luckily, you can save your progress and live to fight another day. On the negative side, the Genesis 2 player modes are completely missing here, as it's only one player, though you can play two players that alternate turns. Like the gameplay, the graphics are extremely similar to the Genesis titles. This makes no real use of the Sega CD's hardware sprite scaling abilities, and instead looks like a modified Road Rash 3 engine. The flow of the screen tends to be on the choppy side, and trackside detail is small, sparse, and lacking in significance. You'll get no big uptick in biker animations either. Considering the extra hardware in the Sega CD, Electronic Arts really skimped on the actual visuals here, something terrible. Even compared to the earlier games, it lacks polish and variety. In Road Rash 3, you went around the world, 
racing on snow-covered tracks, desert roads, and it felt smoother all the while. I mean, if you were just watching gameplay alone, there is not a single element of this game's presentation that would stand out that it's on a CD-based gaming system capable of hardware sprite scaling. While the gameplay graphics are lifted straight from the 16-bit Sega Genesis versions, the front end and cinemas are actually from the 32-bit 3DO title. You get the same crazy art style with a lot less color. Instead of redrawing these screens, Electronic Arts just dithered everything to hell, and the still images take a massive dive in quality. Fortunately, the full motion video scenes at the start and end of the races don't look too bad at all. Not quite 3DO quality, but still easy to see and understand what's happening. If you sit idle for too long, it will even break out in a music video for your enjoyment. The one area where Road Rash CD really stands out is its audio presentation. While most of the in-game sound effects sound no different than what you'd hear in the Genesis versions, you get an option that not even the 3DO game had, the ability to listen to its licensed soundtrack while you actually race. This adds a certain grandeur to the proceedings and makes this version stand out. You also get full control over your sound mix. You can completely drown out the other sounds and just jam to the music tracks. You get songs from Soundgarden, Swerve Driver, Monster Magnet, and a few others. If you enjoy this kind of music, this option cannot be overstated. It makes a world of difference to be able to race to this music and it's something you couldn't do in the 3DO, PlayStation, or Saturn releases. The lone weakness in the sound department is that it completely omits any option for the chip tunes of the previous games. As a fan of those soundtracks, I would have loved an option to play any of the music from the first three cartridge games. There was certainly plenty of room left on the CD for them. The first draft of this video was 18 minutes of me crapping on it for not using the scaling hardware of the Sega CD to create a more impressive engine. I mean, hell, they could have at least redone the sprites to use the technology better. This was originally a huge letdown for me when I first purchased it. I wanted something fresh that took advantage of the hardware, and yet I got a game that looked nearly identical to the cartridge releases before it. I didn't expect 3DO levels of goodness, but this should have been a better looking game given the specialized hardware the machine had in it. There are a number of games for the Sega CD that showed it was capable of doing something unique that could have really made this version stand out. There were even a few magazine reviews that really got my hopes up about these possibilities. I'd be lying though if I said this wasn't an enjoyable racer. The core gameplay is as fun as ever, and being able to rock that killer soundtrack during the races is a hell of a bonus. I wanted it to look so much better than it did, but my love of that 16-bit gameplay keeps me from hating on it too much. There is a lot of fun to be had here if you enjoyed the previous Genesis titles, particularly if you also enjoy the type of music that it's packaged with. Like so many Sega CD games, I file this one under the What Could Have Been label. That means that what's here is an enjoyable game, but it was capable of being so very much more had the developers really sought to use the Sega CD's hardware. It was absolutely infuriating to have a home machine released in 1991 capable of hardware sprite scaling and rotation, and to actually get so few games over the course of nearly five years that actually used it. Fortunately, the added bonus of using the licensed music while you race really helps, and it has all of the really cool full motion video from its 3DO cousin. If you have a Mega SD or you play Sega CD games via emulation, I do recommend you fire this up and give it a play. For you collectors out there, this one is shot up in price and now goes north of $50, often approaching $100 for mint condition. This game is not worth that kind of money, and I would redirect your attention to the Genesis versions of 1, 2, and 3, all of which tend to be quite a bit cheaper. I'm Sigalord X. 
Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.